Here's how to become insanely disciplined so that way you can lock onto your goal of becoming a top tier software engineer with laser focus until you succeed. I wasn't always disciplined in school. I rarely did my homework and barely paid attention in class, but I transformed myself by becoming a Microsoft software engineer within 12 months of writing my first line of code. I was level 60, made $167,000 per year there, but before I learned how to code, I had zero tech background. I achieved this by studying full time, six days per week for 12 months straight. Let me share how I developed the discipline to make this happen. Many people talk about discipline as if it's a fixed trait, but discipline is a skill that you can develop. The first way you can develop discipline is by optimizing your environment so that way the disciplined actions you need to take are the default choice and the easiest choice. So it minimizes the amount of willpower required to actually do those actions. The second thing you can do is literally strengthening the neural networks in your brain that are responsible for willpower, such as impulse control and focus. And then the third thing is mindset stuff, such as beliefs and mental programming. I'll get into that stuff too. The number one way I see people fail is that they get distracted. There are many more things in life that are potentially more fun and exciting than learning how to code for the first time. And your brain experiences pleasure in relative terms, specifically through the dopamine neurotransmitter. The more pleasurable something is, the more dopamine it releases. The way your brain experiences pleasure from dopamine is it has dopamine receptors which receive the dopamine. And when it binds, that's when we feel the pleasure. But your brain tries to maintain homeostasis, meaning it tries to maintain an equilibrium. So it doesn't want too much of anything or too little of anything. So if there's a lot of dopamine coming into the brain, your brain will downregulate the amount of dopamine receptors you have. So that way you can only bind to so many dopamine molecules at a time. So the more pleasure you experience, meaning the more dopamine that is being released into your brain, the more your brain's going to start to downregulate your dopamine receptors. So it's going to take more and more dopamine to feel the same amount of pleasure. So if your life is filled with dopamine spiking activities, such as playing video games, partying, dating around, your dopamine receptors are going to be downregulated. So the little dopamine that's released from learning how to code, it's not going to be pleasurable for you at all. Or at least it's going to be much harder to find pleasure from learning how to code. So the way I like to think about it is your brain will gravitate to whatever releases the most amount of dopamine in your life. And so the key to making coding as pleasurable and as motivating as possible is you make it the primary source of dopamine in your life where everything else that you do is less stimulating and less pleasurable than coding. So you could think of living a monk lifestyle, someone who only meditates, sleeps, walks, eats. And so if you're only doing those things in your life and then you code, coding is going to be a lot more pleasurable. Your dopamine receptors are going to be very upregulated because the brain has not been experiencing a lot of dopamine. So it's trying to receive as much dopamine as possible. So the party animal who's always doing dopamine spiking activities is probably going to be feeling around the same amount of pleasure as someone who's living a monk like lifestyle. But if the monk starts living the rock star lifestyle, the monk is going to start experiencing insane amounts of pleasure, but that's only going to last so long because then the dopamine receptors are going to downregulate again. So over the long term, no matter what you do, you're going to be experiencing around the same amount of pleasure. So you might as well try to make the things that are beneficial for your life, such as learning how to code, your primary source of dopamine where you get pleasure from, even if it's less stimulating than other dopamine spiking activities, as long as you avoid them and you abstain from them, because those activities are going to pull you away from coding and it's going to make it take way more willpower to sit down and do the work if you don't even find it that pleasurable. So if we look at the neuroscience of drug addiction, drug addiction can actually be related to learning how to code when avoiding dopamine spiking activities. Because someone who's addicted to drugs, their dopamine receptors have down regulated. So the only thing that gives them pleasure in life are the drugs that release insane amounts of dopamine, but everything else in life is completely bland in comparison. And as we all know, drug addicts, they can't take a little bit of the drug here and there and take it in moderation. They usually end up binging and it destroys their lives. So obviously that's way more of an extreme example, but if you really want to optimize your environment and make learning how to code something that you stick with and you don't relapse by doing other dopamine spiking activities, you want to cut and completely sacrifice all the other dopamine spiking activities. So for example, in my house, I have no junk food. I don't have a TV. I don't have any video games. This makes it much easier to abstain from those things. Now, if you don't get addicted to any of those things, then cool. Maybe you don't need to abstain from it and completely eliminate it from your house. But think about what pulls you away from coding. If when you're trying to learn how to code and you end up doing something else instead, what is that? Whatever that thing is, you need to get rid of it because obviously that thing is distracting you from learning how to code. And so kind of like a heroin addict, you need to cut the supply and completely abstain from it. That's if you want to stay 100% consistent all the way until you land the job. Most people are on and off with their progress towards their goals. If you're cool with that, then go ahead. But I'm just telling you what worked for me. I wanted to become a software engineer as soon as possible. I wanted to get the skills. And instead of trying to balance everything, I completely cut off everything else and focused on one thing. I also recommend tracking your time and making sure you're putting in the 
set amount of times that you want to do per week. So for example, if you want to study 20 hours per week, track it and make sure you're hitting it. If you're not hitting it, then you need to put more time on your calendar to make sure that you hit those goals. Once you land the software engineering job and you have the skills and you're comfortable, be my guest, do whatever you want. But if you want to know how I went from zero to Microsoft software engineer within 12 months, that's exactly what I did. I went all in. You can increase your willpower by strengthening the neural networks in your brain responsible for impulse control and focus. And for my research, the most proven way to do this is meditation. A lot of people think of meditation as just something that you do to relax or clear the mind. It does a lot of things, but one of the things that it also does is increase your willpower. So the main reason I meditate is because I want to maximize my willpower and have the highest levels of impulse control and focus as possible. And if you look at the studies, when people meditate, it actually reinforces the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is responsible for focus and impulse control. So there are MRIs done before meditating and after meditating. There's physical brain change. There's neuron growth in the brain in the areas related to willpower. So I remember about seven years ago when I first moved out of my mom's house, my ability to focus was very bad. I had a very bad impulse control. I couldn't get myself to clean my own room or do the dishes. It was just incredibly boring to me. But then I started meditating. I would meditate for 20 minutes every single day. And after I did it for 30 days straight, I noticed a huge change. I made it to where I could easily do my chores and I could do a lot more work. I was way more disciplined and it required much less effort for me to do things that looked hard from the outside. So if you're a little skeptical about trying meditation, I recommend trying at least for 30 days, 20 minutes each day. See if you see a difference and then continue doing it from there if you'd like, but at least give it 30 days, I would say, because for me, it made a huge difference. And according to the science and also my personal experience, it definitely helps in increasing your willpower. And so now when it comes to mindset slash beliefs that will serve you in becoming more disciplined, there's a few beliefs that will really help you. That is taking pride in being disciplined, taking pride in being a good software engineer, taking pride in being a good learner, understanding how scarce time is in our lives. We only have so much time, so you want to make the best of it. And making the disciplined actions you know you need to take every day to reach your goals, your minimum standards rather than your goals. To have those mindset shifts, you need to program your mind. And one thing to note here is that humans have evolved to be programmed by other humans. We learn by observation and we learn by our parents. And so the way other people think and act, that's going to heavily influence how we think and act. Our brain actually has something called mirror neurons, which fire when we observe someone else doing something. And it's almost the same as us actually doing it. And so we're reinforcing those pathways in our brain. So it's easier for us to do it by just watching someone else to do it. So that's good if we're observing good actions, but if we're observing bad actions, that's bad. And that's programming our mind in a negative way. So you want to be aware of this. And I highly recommend you cut out people in your life that are programming your mind negatively. This is called crowd psychology. We tend to act and think like the people we surround ourselves with. And so mental programming is real. You can program your mind to believe different things. In fact, brainwashing is real. It's well documented. People can be brainwashed to believe things that are not true. So if that's possible, then you can definitely brainwash yourself to believe things that are true. There are a lot of ways to program your mind, but one of the best ways is to control the information that goes into your mind and only receive information that enforces the beliefs and the minds that you wanna have. And cutting out all information that does not support that. Because if you think about it, if you only hang out with people who are disciplined and you only consume information from people who are disciplined or you only consume information that reinforces ideas of discipline, then if you're not being disciplined, then you're probably gonna feel like a failure. You're breaching your minimum standards and you're gonna try harder to, to increase your discipline. If you're hanging around a bunch of losers though and you consume loser content, then being disciplined is probably gonna make you feel more superior than everyone else. And you're gonna feel like you're doing good instead of that being a minimum standard. And so you're less likely to stick to it. You want the discipline actions you know you need to take to be your bare minimum standards. At least that's my recommendation. There's the systemizing and empathizing theory, which describes the differences in people's brains. And some people are much more interested in systemizing things and other people are more interested in empathizing. So for example, I'm very much a systemizer. I like to build things. I like to build systems. My girlfriend is very much an empathizer. She works in healthcare. She works in hospitality and anything coding related completely disinterests her. So for her, it would take a shit ton of discipline to try and learn how to code. So keep that in mind. If you hate coding and you need all the discipline in the world just to learn how to code, then I don't recommend that you take that career path because it's probably not for you. But also do keep in mind that when you're learning how to code, usually you will develop a passion for it as you get good at it. Because in the beginning, learning how to code is hard. But once you learn the skills, you can start building software and you'll be in flow because instead of learning new things, you're just applying the things you've already learned. And that's when things can get really fun and you can use your creativity to build a lot of different types of software products or build anything that you envision. And so typically this is how it works. You develop a passion for it as you get skilled at it. Now, if you're looking to become a software engineer and you want to get fast tracked into the industry and you want to be mentored by me, 
You can click the link in the description to book a call with me. This is where we can talk and see if we're a good fit to work together and we can chat about investment. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and I wish you the best of luck.